Today we have very interesting learning is about this tool called a SWOM, a multi-agentic framework or a potential multi-agentic framework or an orchestration framework. Let me quickly demonstrate you this multi-agentic chatbot which I built. If I start with a hi, like with any other chatbots, there comes a response from an agent called as triage agent. Hello, how can I assist you today with your healthcare needs? So you understand this chatbot is mainly for a health bot 24 seven as it's written there. And I would say that, hey, uh, I am having high fever. What shall I do? This particular query will bring a new agent, probably. Let's see that. So this query just brought a new agent, which is a medical advice agent. It's no more the same triage agent. There's a new agent now, which suggests me the steps, like stay hydrated, take rest, reduce fever, etc., etc. I would love to visit a doctor. Is that possible? I say that I would love to visit a doctor. I don't want to speak with an agent anymore. I want to go to a doctor and visit him or her. Now comes the appointment scheduling agent. This makes sense, right? So sure, I can help you with an appointment with a healthcare provider. Please let me know preferred date. Let's uh, do it tomorrow at six. And when I say that, I hope my appointment will be booked. Your appointment has been successfully booked for tomorrow at 6 p.m. Thanks. That's all. And when I say thanks, I'm expecting like a triage agent, which is back again. You are welcome. If you need anything else, just let me know. So as you can see, a multi-agent taking care of this entire scenario. This multi-agentic framework was built very easily with just few lines of Python code. Thanks to this very new package called a swarm, which came from none other than the OpenAI team. Hey guys, welcome back. And for people who are new out here, I'm Avro. I'm very much interested in this niche of AI stacks, the large language models and all these orchestration tools to build AI apps. I left academia where I finished my PhD and now I'm in an AI startup where we allow people to build apps with an AI agent or an AI app builder. I always try to stay up to date with this latest AI stacks. This makes me to document my learnings. And that's what I share with all of you. Let's say you have two agents. One of them is Agent Bob. Other is the Agent Amy. A user asks question to Agent Bob that, Hi Bob, can you tell me about Swarm? Agent Bob replies, Sure, Swarm is a group of independent agents working together. That's also how you can define a multi-agentic framework. The next question from the user, again to uh, Agent Bob is great. I want to hear a joke, but Agent Bob is not equipped with a different uh, conversation. For example, a humorous conversation. Agent Bob is pretty factual. So now what Agent Bob does is it passes or it dedicates a work to another agent. That's the Agent Amy, who is really good in humorous response. So Agent Amy replies, why don't scientists trust atoms? Because they make up everything. And that's how this delegation works among agents. And that's what they call as the handoffs, which is a very important concept while working with swarms. This orchestration framework is not the newest. There has been other like the Langchain, the Crew AIs and the Fidatas. However, in my personal opinion, after using it for the past couple of hours and building this app, I really feel that this tool is pretty simple, yet very powerful. There is an elegancy while using this particular functions of the SDKs behind Swarm. In part of it that they really want to focus on multi agents or the agentic behavior. For example, they talk about the entire routine. They talk about the delegation between two agents or among agents. That's well, let's come to the cookbook, which I mentioned before. So this was uh, published in October 10th. And they say that when working with language models, quite often, all you need for solid performance is the good prompt and also the tools which you need. That's why the function calling which OpenAI SDK has is also very crucial while getting an agent custom prompt, the system prompt, and also the function calling. Those together combine this entire routine, delegating tasks from one agent to other. That's the entire routine or the workflow while working with large language model. And it has become a norm nowadays. They have given this entire workflow. Why entire routine or this workflow is such a, like a tedious job. It's a huge chunks of code. How about making it into a compact, or abstract into a particular package, which gave birth to Swarm. And Swarm is very experimental and it's educational at this point. And they have said that it's not intended for production usage. However, 
as I showed in the demo, it's pretty good enough. It's good enough. Then writing 100 lines of code in 40 to 50 lines of code, you can have multi-agentic framework. Next will come how to use this form and we'll actually implement in right and away app. jump into a data button where we will build an app, a simple front end and also the back end. Uh, if you have not watched my previous video, you will see I have built a couple of apps with data button already where you prompt your ideas and data button start to build the front end and then slowly we build the back end and then we capitalize on that. So in this example, a simple front end is more than enough. The chatbot because our idea is to have a multi-agentic chatbot. I think we just go with the minimal theme and I just hit the starting point. Let's see what data button comes up as the first step of an UI. And from there, our main focus is on building the backend. With the very first prompt, data button could create a very nice sleek UI for us. As you can see, uh, it has this light and dark mode toggle. I hope it's around 90 lines of front end code, which is in React. Next part, which is the most crucial part of this entire video is building the backend and connecting the backend to the frontend. We can prompt our way in this case. Otherwise, we just write down the code and take help from the AI whenever we need to. So I'll just ask the data button agent. Can you create a backend called multi agent? So the agent is now creating a backend for us. As you can see, this is the new backend which agent created. Now let's add some functionality to it. What specific features or endpoints would you like to include? Now, instead of prompting the whole way, since we already know and the main focus is understanding how Swarm works, I will just give our data button agent a few context on how it works. This particular example, nothing but how to create an agent with Swarm. That's one of the most critical part. Other part is this agent handoff. Here you see there are two agent. One is the English speaking agent, which is the main agent in this case, and also the Spanish speaking agent. And here comes one of the function, which returns a string. It's very important here where the function gets appended to this uh, English speaking agent. And then here comes a response. So let me just quickly copy this and implement here in data button and ask data button agent, uh, can you make sure to use the latest code in and with hashtag you refer to any feature within data button you need to uh, install the swarm library and use open ai also i would provide the agent uh, the link to install swarm library so if, and then i'll just hit the prompt the agent says that First, we need to install the Swarm library. Then we'll update the multi-agent API to use the Swarm library and open AI API key. Finally, we'll convert the existing code into API router. Before we proceed, do you already have an open AI API key uh, set up as a secret? Can you confirm that you want to keep all this existing functionality in the current code? So I just uh, gave the identity model of while well, creating the API endpoint where the input would be the user query and also the output would be the response from this particular uh, client or run, uh, which we initialized in the beginning from this form package. If you see data button initiated the uh, installation of the Python package, if we just go back to config, we'll see the how it's installing. It's using this exact uh, to create a post endpoint called query that takes the user input, as I mentioned over the prompt, and we'll use the existing code to process the query and return. We'll use the data button secret for open AI API key. I think there will be an error because uh, data button secret does not contain any secrets or the open AI API key, but we'll fix that in the next step. So we'll iterate over this. Okay. So we'll finish uh, installing it, the library, and it also wrote a few lines of code. Let's see the code first. So it has now already initialized the swarm package and it defined the agent to agent, the English speaking agent and the Spanish agent for the handoff transfer to Spanish agent from the Spanish agent to the English agent that also it has written. Okay. So it has done most of the part and I'm pretty sure there should be an error, which, ah, okay. So this is the part where it tried it. So it has commented that part. Let's do it. So it will first, it plans that it will first add the open API key as a secret. We'll update the backend code to use the secret. And finally, we'll make sure the front end can access if it is needed. So I'll just paste the open AI API key. And uh, now it will update this backend once it stores it. So if I just go to this config file, you will see here it stores my OpenAI API key. And now it is updating the code for us. It has done it. So 
it used the OS library to to add it in the environment. Perfect. Uh, I'll just ask you to test it now. Uh, can you please test uh, this endpoint? And if I just give the hashtag and this, and you will see uh, the data button will test this code for us. It's calling this endpoint. We can see in the console log, and it shows here it made a post to this particular endpoint, and it worked for us pretty well. Okay, so we now have created the endpoint more or less. I'll just show you quickly what are things which are printing so that it's easier for us to understand. So few thing is one of the response which the agent will reply, it's especially like this, when you run the client, the swarm client, which we initialize in the very beginning. And then we pass the swarm client with the English agent because that's our main agent at this point. And then we also pass with the messages, which this point is adding here. And this is also passed here. And while returning, we are returning the response, which you obtain from this agent. That's one of them. And also the agent name so that we understand which agent is using. Now, let's say we let's uh, test uh, the endpoint. Okay. And uh, we, we, we asked the data button agent to actually test our uh, this multi agent with a Spanish word it is now calling the endpoint. And we'll see the agent name agent name is coming from here. The response object has the agent and also its name Dire endpoint of multi agent with different language swap. But the key part is also here, the transfer to Spanish agent. That's important. I will just quickly implement or integrate this to the front end. Okay. Okay. So let me try with a new message and let's see. Okay. I say, Hey, and I just send it to the data button agent. And now it's showing that it's English agent. That's pretty cool. The next part would be like, if I say in, in Spanish and if I just send it there and now it says it's a Spanish agent. Okay. So since this part is working well, I think the next part is a bit more complicated and I would like to just show you how that works instead of asking data button to write it for us. Uh, there is this uh, GitHub repository, which I made with this entire medicine agent, which I was mentioning all this time. I'll just copy this file. And while I asked data button to implement it, I will just also explain how it works. And I'll just create AI health chatbot. And I just create this backend here, copy and paste this entire thing, which I copied from this GitHub repository. I will leave the link as well. And I just pass this to, to data button that can it make it work for me with the front end. And meanwhile, how this entire thing works, there are a lot of additional features, which I've added here. main agents, which you have, one of them is this tri a triage agent, which has a particular set of goals, like the instruction medical advice agent, which has another set of goal, as well as the appointment scheduling agent, which can schedule appointment and has access to a function called as agent book appointment. This is the additional function, which you pass like this here in case of using swarm and also this prescription details agent and all these agents are together added to the triage agent. So basically every time it's connected to the triage agent and as a result, the triage agent acts as the boss agent, which can pass or hand off to any of these agents and further each of these agents, or at least the appointment scheduling agent has this agent that can book an appointment, can save it to the data button storage. And this is just one of the examples of the demo, which I prepared just for the fact of showcasing. And again, it does more or less similar work, like updating the history of the entire messages, the agent name and the messages here, the agent name is very important so that we can just always check which agent has been used. And it's very similar, like we used with this multi agent, but it's just, it has more functionalities and that makes it a bit more useful in a real life scenario. And that's what I wanted to explain. Okay. Now data button says that it has already implemented uh, the changes for this new endpoint, which is uh, the AI health chatbot. And now if I just go back here and if I just check the code, if I check this brain code by which it integrates it, it's a process message v1, which is basically this particular chatbot's endpoint. And now if I just check here, the chatbot, if I say hi, and I just send it, you'll see the post message is done. It's a triage agent, which is, which is replying to us. It will be nice to also get the agent name. So that part is missing, but I think it's working because we can already see that it's the response is coming from the triage agent. But 
Okay, so now it's time to test this AI Hill chatbot backend as well. So if I just save with hey, and I would expect the triad agent, which the main agent will just reply. Uh, next would be to say my symptoms. So I would I won't expect a triad agent now to come and say like how you're having. Instead, I would expect a general medical advice agent, which we have, should come here. That's it. Uh, we can improve this front end. It should have a markdown rendering, but it's okay. We can fix that. So the next part would be to test with the scheduling agent. How about I visit your uh, clinic? Let's see if this triggers the scheduling agent or not. And here it goes. You can deploy this app just from here and embed anywhere in your website or just build a brand new website here in data button. That's also possible. But let me come back to this complicated multi-agentic workflow. I think for us, this multi-agent has been pretty straightforward. We have two, the English agent and the Spanish agent, which is two agent. And there is a handoff or passing over the baton to the other agent, as I mentioned here in this place. But in this case, with AI Health Chatbot, we have a numerous agents. For example, we have the triage agent, which is, let's say, the main agent. And then based on the user query, the triage agent passes the query either to the medical advice agent, which is out here. And every agent is defined with a name or with an instruction. That's how Swarm works. And an agent can also have a functional access. So basically, this appointment scheduling agent has an access to this particular function called as agent book appointment. Probably I haven't showed that, but I can also do that. Uh, can you book an appointment and if I say this, I would expect it to book an appointment. I will help you schedule an appointment. Please know the clinic hours may vary and may not. Would you like me to proceed the appointment? Yes, sir. And when I say this, I would expect it to book an appointment. You will see where it books. Your appointment has been successfully booked for tomorrow at 9 p.m. And if you see this new part is added here in this storage. So right now I'm showing data button storage as an appointment booking place. But in reality, when connect to Firebase or any other uh, databases like Superbase or Firebase. And how is that working? That is working based on this booking appointment, this particular function out here. The book appointment function also checks to check the appointment if it's available or not. And then to save the appointment, it uses this particular function, which is also accessible here. So this save appointment function is how it stores this data button's internal SDK, db.storage.takes.put. And with appointment, it dumps the entire uh, JSON uh, schema back to data button storage. And this entire thing, the save appointment is within the book appointment function. It's accessible via this appointment scheduling agent. So this appointment scheduling agent has access to other functions like the agent book appointment and you can add multiple agents. And the other key part which we must notice here and this handoff, this handoff is very important with Swarm, which is this particular function which is returning a string, this transfer to medical advice or transfer to appointment scheduling agent. This necessary function is accessible by the triage agent or the main agent. Pretty straightforward to create this kind of multi agentic framework with this newest library called a swarm. And we just very few lines of code. If you really see this multi agent has at least 62 to 70 lines of code. Uh, this AI health chatbot, which has a lot of other agents, uh, it has 134 lines of code without a long custom prompt, just one line of instruction. And a few things which I perhaps have missed is the different agent fields, like uh, the model which the agent can accept, the name and the instruction and the tool choice. The tool choice I haven't mentioned, but that's also something an individual agent can accept. So there are a lot of other concepts within each and every agents and the instructions which you pass or the context variables which you pass, which I have not discussed here, but those things which I can make another separate video. But I hope this video is a good enough start to start working with the Swarm, the newest uh, orchestration tool which came from the OpenAI team. Yeah, please let me know how you guys enjoy this video. If there is any question, just let me know in the comment section below. And this particular link will also be up there in the comment section as well or in the description. Cheers.